Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to showcase how to deploy a Streamlib application into a Google Cloud. I'm also going to look into one more component called Docker. As we go, I'm going to explain step by step. Let's go ahead. So we know that a model goes through various phases from understanding the problem to extracting the data, building the model, evaluating the model. At the same time, it's very important to deploy that model into the production side. Because if it is going to be in a production, the model can be showcased to our stakeholders and they would be able to understand the ROI of the given model. So to do that, we have some steps. We are going to use some components, which we are going to look into it. The first component, which is very important, is Streamlit. Streamlit is nothing but a Python library, which can take a pickle file and convert that pickle file based on our web app applications, what we have created. It can showcase into a web app. A web app, it can be in a local host. If you want, you can also deploy it to a Streamlit cloud. But to just make it easier, make it possible, we are going to make sure that we are going to deploy the Streamlit into Streamlit app into a Google Cloud. Okay. So this, this app can be accessed to anywhere, anybody who has the internet. Okay. So as we go, I'm going to showcase you the code also. So as we know that I have, as I was shared earlier, I've also used one more component called Docker. So think like this, okay? So there are a lot of possibilities like when you are running a code and when you deploy a code to a QA, QA environment, the QA is very, very unhappy with the code because the code might be not running in the QA environment. And you exactly don't know what why it is not running because when it comes the code to your side again, it runs fine. To make sure that the environments are similar, there are multiple solutions. For example, you can create a virtual environment and load all the things which are there, which are all the libraries in the virtual environment, then pass the virtual environment to the to, to the QA. But technically, it is a very, very complex process. To make it easier, Docker came into picture. Okay, so Docker, consider Docker as a container, which contains all the packages which are required and this and this container is going to be isolated of all the environment. Now, when you're good, right? What you have to do, you have to just pass this image to the, your QA. And once the QA runs that application in the given image, which is exactly the same replica of your image, it is there's no chance that there is any issue because of the environment. Okay. So as we as I've shared, the Docker is very environment agnostic. Its dependency is isolated. It's very consistent. So there are multiple other importance of Docker. If you have any question on Docker, I can create a totally different video on Docker. Please let me know in the comment. So once we have created the image, so what we are going to do, we are going to publish this image or we're going to push this image to GCP with, into a container registry and then use a container registry image to create a application which can be deployed within the Google Cloud and this application can be accessed through a public URL which I'm going to showcase the whole thing with the help of a code. Now if you have reached till here then technically you understand that first you are going to make a model, build, evaluate the model, put that model into a pickle file. This pickle file can be extracted or can be opened with the help of Streamlit which can be a very good with the help of a very good UI of a web app. This web app can be put for push to work towards a container. This container would have all the required dependencies and all. That given image what the Docker has created can be pushed to the cloud. And then that, that app and that image can be used to deploy the app. And you will get a URL at the end, which can be used to, which just can be given to the stakeholder, which can access the given model with the help of the web app. Okay, if you have any question anywhere, put in the comment. I'm happy to go to feedback. Now, let's go to the code. Detection code into the cloud. So I'm going to use PyCharm because I like PyCharm's UI and all. So I'll start by creating a new project. Okay, so you can name this project anything. Okay, I, I have named it as SMS. And then from there, I will take it ahead. How, what, what are the other steps? Okay. So this is the SMS detection code which you had seen in the Jupyter Notebook. I will give the link to this too. So I have extracted the library, brought the libraries, extracted the data, did the data transformations which is required. For example, converting the ham to zero spam to one, train test plate, count vectorizer, multinomial, putting forward and pipeline. 
and then doing one level of matrix and then at the end very important creating a spam dot pickle file so once we are working on the pie charm because we have we have created a virtual environment hence it says that we it doesn't have panda as a module so you have to install so i have already written the pip install pandas okay so let me install the required libraries and then come back again Parentheses. So I have imported all the required libraries. So the list of libraries which I have imported are pip install pandas, pip install request, and pip install scikit-learn. These are the things which I have used in my code. The other libraries, more or less, are get downloaded when we are when you are going to pip install these libraries. So I don't have to do one by one. Okay. So I have run the code. If you see, I have already run the code. I've got the matrix. As as I've seen last time, I have, I'm getting accuracy score of 99%. And at the end, because we have created a pickle file, I can see a pickle file here. Okay. Then I have ran the streamlit code. So basically, I have just put forward the command streamlit run app.pify, then which brings me to the browser. Okay. I'll just add a message saying congratulations, you have won an iPhone for free. Let's predict so it says this is a spam so now i'll start the process of deploying this code to the cloud when i say deploying to the cloud what does that mean if you see the url of this app right now is localhost 8511 so technically this app this streamlit app is working on my localhost in my system when i say deploying in the cloud it means that i would be able to get a URL which would be able to access from any machine anywhere in this world right and we can actually showcase this app to anyone we want to to deploy to cloud there are a few files which are going to be very very important okay first is the docker file so what happens in docker file it technically helps me to create a image in the cloud so I have put forward all the required instructions so basically the first one is nothing but from python 3 which tells that we have to use python 3 as my base image right then python num buffer which helps me to ensure that that it it's a real time logging okay then i have exposed 8080 is my port number which is going to be in this port is going to run the app right then i have copied my project files into the container Right. Then it has brought forward all the system dependencies which I'm going to run. Then all the Python dependencies. Okay. And then it is going to run the Streamlit app in the server or in the cloud. Okay. So if you see here, I have put forward a one more file called requirements.txt, which I've created here. So I've I have added all the libraries which I'm going to use. Yeah. Okay. NumPy, Panda, Skyland. So what is going to happen is that it is going to install all these libraries first and then it is going to run my app this is the google cloud web page i'll do a quick tour of google cloud so that it becomes easier for you to understand once you click on go to my console it would open this page okay yeah, this page now what we can do just to have a hang on all the things possible in google cloud i'll show you that okay like any cloud it has components for management for compute, for storage, for analytics, for networking, for distributed cloud, for serverless, databases, observability, operations. There are multiple components. Okay. Now, to make sure that we are able to implement or deploy our model, you have to have a billing account. Don't worry. When you start your Google journey, it is going to give you 300 credits. So you can use that. So you need to have a billing account. You can, once once you create a new billing account, it is going to ask you to manage your billing account. So right now I already have a billing account for project, uh, project named Testbed. Okay, what I want you to do is that make sure you upfrontly set a budget and alert. Okay, so I've already created a budget and alert. So you can create a budget and it is going it's very straightforward like you can put a budget of ten dollars which i have already put okay and you can set it up once you do that coming back to the solutions i would need you to focus on two more things called container 
continue the history. Okay, it is a space where our image is going to store. Okay, and cloud run. Cloud run is a serverless application where we would be able to run our image and would be able to get a URL which will be able to access from anywhere. Okay, so this is a very quick introduction. If you have any question, you can put forward in the comment section. Run the GCP code. Before we run the GCP code, you need to make sure that you have the authentication to run the GCP command here. So for that, you are going to need this command to give the authentication. And then you have to run this code to build the image in the GCP. So I have run the command. If you see, it will take some time, somewhere around one to two minutes to run the whole thing. Then we have to go back to GCP. If you see, the code has ran. The code of GC Cloud Build Submit has ran and it's a success. So let's go and see what we can, what we need to do in GCP. So here you have to go to container, container registry. Okay, just to check whether the things has ran or not. Now, if you see, it has came forward one of the registry which has just loaded. Just six minutes ago. Okay, so now if the container is here, technically I can create a service and it should be able to run. To create a service, I should go to cloud run. So once the code has ran, so what you can do is that you can come to here, you can select service, you can select the image which has been produced. So the spam detector, this is the latest image which has been produced, select. The only change what I will do, I'll select Singapore and I will allow unauthenticated invo invocation. So basically anybody can access and I'll keep all the other settings same. So you can in increase the CPU, you can increase the memory too. Okay, I'll say create. So now it is getting the image from, from the Docker what we have created. Okay. And it's running it here. Now if I go to the URL, so now this URL is open for everybody. So anybody in the internet who would like to run your app can actually, you can pass this URL to that person and he can actually run the app. So this is the Streamlit application which is running on cloud. If you see the URL, this URL would be able to access from anywhere in the internet. So let me go ahead and try a text a SMS saying congratulations you have won the iPhone for free let's go and predict it so it says this is a spam let's go and say hi from you come to metro station today that's normal SMS let's say predict and say this is not a spam I added the code to get I will give this link in the description box if you have any question put forward into the comment box happy to give my feedback okay thank you guys thanks for watching